This is EE3720, week 9, lecture 2. And as we discussed in lecture, we're going to look at a case study of the magnetic levitation system. In the sense that for this lecture and next, we will use root locus. So the idea is for this lecture, we will simply do system identification. And next lecture, we will do a lead compensator design plus realization. And next week, we'll wrap up the course by considering board plot or frequency response. Well, I don't want to say frequency response because it's, you can even think about uh, the root locus as quote unquote frequency response. But so anyway, board plot uh, design. Okay. Ah. And the uh, demo system I'm going to use is what is called as a Zeltum Maglev uh, kit. You can Google search it and uh, it's Z-E-L-T-O-M, Zeltum, right? But again, uh, since this is the kit from a company, I'm not going to give you all the details for copyright purposes. It is the details of all the different constants. The derivation, though, what I'm doing can be found in any uh, elementary. So here are the references. Uh, any elementary text on control theory and electromagnetism. But the Zeltum uh, documentation does refer to Cheng's classic book on field and wave electromagnetics uh, so this is Addison Wesley 1983 and the third one is a smile V and F MRAD applied mechatronics. So it's Oxford. And you'll see why the we will, and you'll see where we'll use these citations as we go to the derivation. Okay. So the First part in, uh, the, uh, in the design of any control system is what is called system identification. That is, we come up with a mathematical model of our system. And hopefully from this example, you see why the math understanding the mathematics behind the system is very important, especially issues like I mean, I don't even have to mention this, but I'll mention this. Uh, like sign, S-I-G-N. Oh, it's only a negative sign. You will see how that, <laughs> the, ignoring the negative sign in this example will be disastrous. It's disastrous in, in any thing. Just, it's not, you should never say, oh, it's, it's just a negative sign. Okay, very bad. But anyway, uh, let's look at, a, let's look at a picture of our system. And for those of you who are in my class, you saw the demo of the Zelta Maglev, and I highly recommend you buy their kit and study it if you're really interested in control theory, not only magnetic levita electromagnetic levitation, not superconductivity based levitation. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you, it's a good kit. Right? So what you have is the input voltage going into your electromagnet that induces a current in it, value I. So this current, so here's your object to be levitated weight mg and let's put our coordinate system that way as x uh, maybe we should call it y because it's 
whatever you call it, whatever, I'll call it X, right? And then there's a force obtained from the electromagnet value F. We are obviously going to ignore. And this is, again, the idea behind system identification. Like, we're going to basically assume that the object, so it's very important, that is, we'll assume object is placed at equilibrium position. And that is, if you're a Harry Potter fan, unfortunately, there is no Wingardium Leviosa. That is, we're not going to pull this object from surface level. And the reason is, as you will see, the mathematical reason is that the non the magnetic levitation system is highly nonlinear. So you need to implement a nonlinear trajectory tracking controller to actually pull off a Wingardium Leviosa. And again, if you're really interested, you should buy the maglev kit and make that your project over break or something. Okay, but that's not all that's in our system. There is also, uh, let's see, just draw it out. Let me just, let me just write it out. There is a Hall effect sensor that maps uh, your change in magnetic field to a voltage, and we'll call that Vs. And the goal is going to be for us in the system identification is to get this transfer function. And I'm going to follow a less traditional approach in the sense I want to get our plant of S as V in as the input. And the non-traditional thing is I'm going to ask to find the, I mean, I'm going to define the output as Vs, which is the sensor output voltage. Usually, so let me write this out, uh, traditionally, so note, traditionally, plant of S is defined as the output is the displacement over the input voltage V in of S. And the assumption is there is a one-to-one -one mapping between this um, uh, change in position, OK? and your sensor output. And that that might be the case, let's say if you're at UC Berkeley and you use their maglev system, there is a, the sensor is your photoresistor. Is a um, photo, is basically, yeah, a photoresistor. But here it's not, so anyway, we'll just go with this plant, okay? So it's a traditional one. All right, so let's get into the mathematical details. It's actually fun. So the first thing we're going to do, which you should know, is that from Kirchhoff's, uh, so let's actually do the easier thing. So Newton's second law. So Newton's second law. So here's the mechanical part. Says sum of the forces is the rate of change of linear momentum. Okay. So and this is in vector form. But in our case, there's only, well, we just have to take care of the, Sines algebraic, so the algebraic sum of forces, so the mass is acting down, uh, mg minus f is m times the second derivative of displacement. So this is our first. Uh, well, we're not done in the sense, what is this f? So here is where our reference one comes in, that is from reference one, so the square brackets and the numeral within is a traditional symbol for reference, it's going to be, so from basic electromagnetism, you're going to get the force due to the electro, exerted by the electromagnetic distance x from it along the axes, okay, is going to be, is proportional to i, but it's inversely proportional to the fourth power of the displacement. So in other words, it drops off pretty rapidly, okay, very rapidly. So it's going to be m d squared x over dt squared. So here is our first equation. And how do I know I can stop here? Well, that's, again, basic mathematics, right? In the sense, we are looking for a model of the system. Let's see, we have a displacement variable, which is good. We have our current. Uh, M, G, K is a constant. Uh, M is also a constant. And these constants, I mean, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. But the M and the K, I cannot reveal the Zeltum values because of copyright purposes. But the whole idea behind this lecture is for you to understand system identification. For that, the values are 
they're i'm not saying i don't want to say they're not important but we're not going to use them for system identification how's that okay so newton's second law gives us that and now kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop this you, you better know as electrical engineers juniors the in the input voltage is the drop across the parasitic resistance of the inductor plus l the electromagnet l d i d t okay that's it this is number two and finally for the model of the hall effect sensor okay so this is from reference two we get vs these are now these are all functions of time so let me write that out vs of t is some constant alpha plus beta times one over x to the fourth plus gamma i okay. so this is number three now the block diagram that we have implies that we need to eliminate we want well we had well let me write it we need to eliminate i of t from the linearized why linearized because we're looking at transfer functions uh, that's what i was going to just about to say but i just wrote it out so you need to eliminate the current of the linearized uh the linearized versions of one two and three and the linearized i don't like the word version it's not mathematical equations okay obtained from one two and three there you go obtained from So what we will do is, so the most elegant way to do this, so in the most elegant approach, so or an elegant, I don't want to say most, approach is to use state space. And for some reason, there is a misplaced fear of state space. We don't have to fear state space per se, it's very simple. Uh, in the sense, what we will do is we will thus compute the. We'll first we'll thus uh, define our state variables. Uh, compute equilibrium points and then Jacobi linearize basically Taylor series that's the idea our system around around means we're not going to really quantify that the equilibrium point okay and this process of system identification that is finding the equilibrium point the energy system with the equilibrium point is very standard when you want to design linear controllers so let's now uh, define our state space with state variables and looking at it we have the second derivative of position so natural choices for state variables uh, x or your position velocity and the current so this implies where did i choose this because the derivative we get is x dot x double dot and i dot and recall that the dot notation means derivative with respect to time we will also choose our output variable as v of s okay so we're just defining this and we're also defining this okay. so now what we got to do is do like um, math therefore first thing we will do is we can basically uh, let's compute 
so we have defined our state variable. So let's do this. Step one, state variables. variables okay step two is we will compute equilibrium points so by definition the equal the derivative of your state I mean x dot at the equilibrium points let's call it x equals x vector dagger is zero okay so you don't move that means so if you look at x dot okay so let's uh, look at this therefore your x double dot is also zero therefore one is zero this implies that let's see mg minus k i dagger divided by x dagger to the fourth should be zero correct and your velocity x dot equals zero implies which you get from this entry here okay so this in in ways this entry is x double dot equals being zero okay, x dot equals zero maybe i should written this first but whatever equals zero which implies the velocity is zero that makes sense right so at equilibrium we are not moving so your velocity should also be zero and finally so let's see where's the third one or oh, second one two implies i mean two equals zero implies your i dagger is some equilibrium value of u divided by r so let's call this equation four and let's call this equation five therefore five and four implies that your equilibrium points so we just plug in uh your you over here and then you take the fourth root you're basically going to get let's see MGR. Okay, so you're gonna get equilibrium points as plus or minus square root of k u e q MGR. This is zero, and then this is q over r. Okay. Now this is important that. Now, so I'll write this in red, based on our physical picture, okay, what makes sense is, so you basically, you have two equilibrium points, plus and minus, okay, but then based on our physical picture, I'm going to levitate this object in the, on the, in the positive x direction so what makes sense is the positive square root okay? and these are very very important ideas in system identification again you really have to understand physically what's going on and work do the math appropriately now for this lecture I do understand I'm going to run over time. I said my lectures online will be approximately 20 minutes. It's going to be more than 20 minutes. I'll try to keep it to like 25 minutes. Uh, uh, let's, well, let's try. Right, let me keep going. Now, note that uh, we, it basically says given any, and this is point number one, the sign. Point number two is we cannot, so let me write this down. Uh, also, we cannot, practically obtain any equilibrium levitation so any of them 
we practically we can obtain or well, maybe more clear we can obtain restricted equilibrium points uh, we can only we can, we can practically obtain levitation we cannot practically we can also okay ah practically we can obtain uh, levitation only in a subset of the equilibrium points that's because we really i mean mathematically we can find any we can put like 10000 volts and find the equilibrium point but practically that's not possible right that's all i'm saying okay now therefore so let's going back so this is step three that is we have to linearize so step three is linearize around equilibrium point therefore what we have for our system is x1 dot is x2 x2 dot based on my definition of oh i haven't defined x1 x2 x3 so let me do that in the sense uh, now x vector we have chosen it as x x dot and i okay let this be equal to x1 x2 x3 this implies so we basically what do we want we want x dot equals ax plus bu now i'm going to put actually to be more clear here i'm going to say delta x dot is a delta x plus b u which is b n and delta y because these are the linearized variables it's going to be c delta x plus d v n that's what we want okay therefore uh, this implies now the nonlinear version is x1 dot uh, is x2 and x2 dot if you look at the if you go back up here so x2 dot is x double dot and x double dot is given right here so what we're going to get is g minus k over m x no, x3 it's i the numerator over x1 to the fourth and x3 dot is going to be minus r over l x3 plus v in over l so let me make sure of that so it's going to be yeah here it is so negative r blah blah, blah. and finally we also have our output equation the nonlinear output y is alpha plus beta over x1 squared plus gamma x3 so here's our nonlinear system so this is what we want therefore let's call so what i call this four and five okay so this is so what we need to do is six seven eight nine therefore uh jacobi that is so therefore jacobi i'm distinguished between i'm basically distinguishing between jacobi linearization and like feedback linearization you know, if you're doing nonlinear control but jacobi linearization of six seven eight and nine gives us delta x1 dot is going to be you know, so basically what you're going to get is delta x1 dot delta x2 dot delta x3 dot correct so this is our state equation it's going to be some perturbation on x1 x2 x3 but if you look at this function it's just a function of x2 so if you do a taylor series expansion of the right hand side but you have basically now three phase variables but in this case it's just delta x2 right the linearization of x2 is basically one delta x2 so in other words it's if you call this function f1 so this is basically uh, the partial of f1 with respect to 
x1, the partial of f1 with respect to x2, if you want a shortcut to the Taylor series, is the partial of x1 with respect to, what is that actually, partial, ah. with respect to x3. Let me save, hopefully this thing doesn't crash. And now what I'm going to do, I'm already at 25 minutes. Yeah, it's not crashing. Awesome. In other words, this is my F1 here. So what I'm going to do is this. So let me just finish this up. That is, take the partial. So for this entry, you have to take the partial of this guy with respect to X1. It's not too bad, all right? And then uh, what we have to do, we are not done in the sense you have to evaluate this at the equilibrium point. Then there's going to be plus 0, 0, 1 over L V in because V in enters only in this third equation. Okay? So in other words, you have to you linearize the system around the equilibrium point. Right? It's all about the equilibrium point. So do that. I'm going to pause the lecture and I'm going to show you my final answer. Okay? So let me pause this. I won't go over 30 minutes, I promise. Okay? Let's pause it and I'll be back. Okay, continuing. So I've done like the derivation. So it took me around like 15 minutes to do this. But anyway, so what I've done is completed the Jacobi linearization of each of these equations. Now ignore for now the A, B, C, D. I'll look at that uh, shortly. And again, sometimes this is hard to write using this tablet or using tablet this is actually a D okay so anyway so again the Jacobi linearization that is you take the derivative for example of this function with respect to x1 and then substitute in the equilibrium points that we found and simplify it's not too bad you get this expression and very important there is a negative sign here negative sign here so let's just look at this guy so the derivative of f3 with respect to x1 and x2 are 0. Okay, partial derivatives. Here's your x3. The derivative with respect to x3 of this expression is just simply minus r over l. And v in is your input. Notice you have an input voltage and an equilibrium value of the input voltage. And we'll look at the, how, do, how we use all this and we design the controller in the next lecture. Okay, I was going to do a CISO tool simulation of this, but I'm not going to. I'll do that. I mean, I'll do that in the next lecture. I'm not going to do it in this lecture. And then Jacobi linearizing this guy about the equilibrium point basically gives you this uh, system. But now notice that these these equations here are these are all constants now: a, b, c, and d matrices. That's what these labeling is because now my system is of the classic single uh, state space form linear time invariant system. You take the Laplace transform of this guy, assuming zero initial conditions because of finding transfer functions, we get this expression. You can eliminate x by take, computing the simple inverse. And if you do this on your calculator, again, here is where I'm not going to give you all these values because of copyright with respect to Zeltum. But basically, you get this transfer function. And notice in my entire derivation, I did not plug in any numbers till the end. And that's how we should do like any mathematical derivation not only system identification okay but anyway let's look at this transfer function right if you notice i have a pole in the right half plane the system is definitely unstable and you can obviously guess that physically i have two complex conjugate zeros but what's interesting is i have this pole compared to these guys you take the square root of this this is around 44 let me see i took the square root of it Oh, I haven't. Let me take the square root of that. 1959.4. It's basically 44.26. So this fellow is not only way out in the left half plane, but I mean, it's in the left half plane, so it's negative. So this is basically in the time domain. It's a decaying exponential, like very, very fast. I'm basically going to ignore this pole. Okay. Again, this is all part of system identification. You should know that this pole, basically from your 30, 50, and 37, 20 ideas, concepts that this pole can be safely ignored compared to the effects of this pole and so here is my much simplified transfer function if you do a root locus using only a p controller you're going to you'll see that you have 
complex one to get zero, so obviously this is what you're going to get. Right? So the open loop system is clearly unstable. For, it's not the open loop. What am I saying? I mean, the open loop system is unstable, but the closed loop system with the P controller is unstable. Therefore, uh, next time we will design what is we'll basically design a lead of S. Okay. And the, how we get this, you can actually use the Nyquist criterion, Nyquist stability criterion, not the sampling criterion, of course, but we won't cover this. Okay. Intuitively speaking, we basically are going to not compensate for the steady state error in the sense we're going to compensate for the transient response. Okay. And the reason for that is like I told you way before in the lecture that we're not really going to do a Wingardium Leviosa, right? We're going to place the object at the equilibrium point and then turn on, well, turn on our controller. So we're going to dampen out any uh, transients. So that's why that you can understand that in, intuitively. That's why we need a lead compensator. But we'll do that next time. And I'm sorry I went over 30 minutes, but hopefully this was very helpful in consolidating all the concepts you have learned so far in your control system sequence that is 30, 50, 37, 20, along with all the necessary prerequisites of Laplace transforms, um, which you had, which you should have learned in 2070, Laplace transforms, uh, mechanical systems, KVL, everything, the whole shebang. Right. But anyway, see you next time for the control design.